Thank you very much. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today to address all of you. You know, I yesterday, believe it or not, I was in Istanbul. They had the 100th anniversary of the IWF, International Weightlifting Federation, celebration. And today the Congress is going on, but yesterday was the big OB ceremony, and I had the privilege of carrying the Olympic flag, and they made food or something. The one, the female that snatched 303 pounds was my co-walk worker with me. She had the IWF flag, and you know, she, she, my height with her high heels, <laughs> and, and she's extremely uh, attractive, but on the heavy side, but we made a good pair going up there. But you know, it, it made, it was sort of disturbing in some way for me that I was the only American over there as a weightlifter. There were a number of Europeans, Suleiman Abudu, uh, Miyaki, Alexeya, and all the others were there. And I wondered, why can't we have more Americans at that international level? And when you reflect back, so we can turn it down a little bit. Um, when I reflect back to all the world's record that's being made now, and compare it with the American records, the American records are really low. The world's record, I can understand, it's supposed to keep going up, but so is the American record. At one time, in the era of my time, breaking an American record was like breaking a world's record, because the record was that high. But somehow, along the way, the American records start, stopped going up, and the world's record just kept on improving. A lot of it had to do, I think, was the mental aspect of training, how to lift correctly. Basically, the rules hasn't changed as far as Olympic lifting is concerned. And I'm glad that Bud Charmig is there, because he's translated a lot of the Soviet books that covered the science of great lifting. And some of the things that I'm about to go through with Celeste here, I want him to be able to verify what I say. So what I'm going to do is today, we're going to the basic thing of going to lifting. A number of lifters have been lifting for years and years, and there's a lot of flaws in their lifting ability simply because they haven't paid attention to the technique. And we're going through the basic movement. So can you turn sideways? Right. The start position, this is one of the most important things, getting the proper start position. This way, she actually has a shoulder right over the bar when she should be leaning more forward, right. The shoulders would be more over the bar. Right. Notice when she did that, her hips came up higher. The important thing of Olympic lifting is the shoulder has to be higher than the hip the hip higher than the knee. Many times, even the heavyweights, they think they have to have the hips low, but their hip is sometimes even lower than where the knees are. So that's the position they have to hit. The shoulders well over the bar. You're getting tired, right? <laughs> and the other most important thing that most people seem to neglect is the back arch. Can you hit the back arch? Right. The stronger the back arch, the better. This is critical, not so much for the start of the lift, but for the finish of the lift. Because once the back breaks, you have no pulling power, you have no leverage, okay? Can you get back into that start position? Now, the first thing you notice, a little bit more over, the balance is gonna be toward the ball and the feet. If you start pulling from here immediately, you're gonna have blood on the bar because it's gonna scrape the shin, try coming up without moving your head. That means she did not employ her legs at all. The back came to come up too quickly. And that's where you get, anytime you start scraping the shin, you are not employing the legs, you are employing your back. So, how can we get the knees out of the way of the back, of the bar? 
by hold, maintaining that position and start using the legs to press down. Okay? okay don't move, don't make the movement too quick. The back arch, okay, the shoulder and the hip, notice where it is. Now she's just going to straighten her legs out and keep that position for it. Right. So notice, you always hear from the coaches, stay over the bar. That means don't use your back too soon. Stay over the bar. This is critical. And at the same time, it's important that it's close to the body. The once the bar moves away from the body, you're losing leverage. Okay? Now, from this position, a lot of times people would start trying to get their knees right in. You know, in the 1960s, 70s, they stressed the knee going under real quick. Double knee bend, double knee bend. But if you did that, go ahead, try to get your knees right under. Yeah. Actually, the bar starts slowing down. The momentum you gain, you can relax. <laughs> the momentum you gain by bringing the weight off the floor smoothly up, you lose it the moment you start getting the knees in because the bar starts slowing down or start pausing. You don't want that. And besides that, when you do that knee bend, your back actually had straightened out. So you lost the back pulling muscle. What you want to do is stay over the bar as long as you can until your legs are almost straight. Okay, so let's continue to that. Bend over more, start from the bottom, and go slowly. Okay. Right, okay, stay right there. When she's like this, her knees are almost straight, her legs. And she's still, the shoulders over the bar. At this moment now, her hip is gonna move forward as she straighten out, go ahead. So that's the movement you want. You don't want to have it in such a way that you start pivoting the hip going backward because what you did then, is you cut the legs off completely. You want to get the leg dry as long as you can. Who wants more push the floor? But what you're doing is, when you get to that position where the legs are almost straight, the hamstrings are very tight. You really wound the hamstring up. So that hamstring is ready to contract, bring the body right up. And that's where the finish becomes strong. And if your back at any time buckles, you lost that leverage. If your hand grip open up a little bit, you lost the leverage. Anytime there's a jarring movement of the bar, you're losing leverage. So you notice that, can you try doing some snatching from the floor? Okay, now she's smooth, pulling relatively smooth. Okay, thank you. Relax. <laughs> you know, most people, when it comes to a certain point, it triggers a, a reaction of exploding. A lot of times you see one, two, right? When you see that two movement, if you don't see a smooth movement, but one, two movement, that means you exploded there. And if you exploded there, something has to give. Either the barbell moves up faster, or maybe your body buckled somewhere. Your grip gives out, the shoulder hit jars, or maybe the back is buckled. At the same time, all these little action takes place at the explosive movement. You lost momentum. You cut your legs short. So, a real good smooth pull is one from the floor, all the way continuously with no visible change of speed, but you're just getting faster and faster and faster. And if you don't achieve that, then you have committed the time of not really being able to extend your